Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a romance fantasy film, Undine. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film starts with a woman named Undine and a man named John, a couple who's out to have a date. There's a build-up tension between them as Undine suspects her partner of cheating on her. John tries to brush it off by acting normal and offering her coffee. Undine declines at first, but still accepts the offer in the end. She is having a hard time suppressing her emotion and fails as she cries silently when John leaves her to get coffee. But as soon as the man comes back, Undane holds back her tears and tries to act like nothing happened. John receives a call and is ready to go after lighting his cigarette. Undane stops him by threatening him that she will have to kill him if he leaves her. John agrees with her, but his face says otherwise. And so, Undine leaves. Undine goes inside an establishment where a personnel greets her. She changes her clothes and looks outside from the window, where she spots John talking to someone on the phone. She's not happy with what she sees, as she probably thinks he's talking to another woman. But then someone calls for her attention and tells her that someone's already waiting for her. Undine turns out to be a historian lecturing on Berlin's urban development. As they are in the middle of the lecture, Undine zones out as her mind goes back to where John is. Luckily, she's back on track immediately. After her lecturing session, she goes outside to meet John where she left him, but he's no longer there. She goes inside the cafe with the hopes of finding John there, but unfortunately she doesn't. She sees an open faucet, which she closes. As she's about to exit the building, she hears someone calling for her name from the aquarium. It catches her attention, but she seems afraid of the water. A man named Kristoff enters the cafe. He turns out to be an industrial diver and is also one of the audience who received her lecture a while ago. Kristoff compliments her and attempts to ask her out for coffee, but her facial expression is blank, so Kristoff takes that as a sign to back off. Kristoff's back bumps into the displays, and the aquarium seems to rattle, so she pulls the man away from the aquarium. The aquarium suddenly breaks. The water overflows and gets them. Undine even injures herself, whereas Kristoff tries to remove the shards of glass that gets on her. Kristoff shows hormone interest in Undine. The scene shifts and shows Kristoff doing his work underwater as a giant catfish as big as two meters passes by his sight. He takes so long to go up as he's mesmerized by what he just witnessed that his workmate almost pulls him up. Kristoff will spend the whole weekend on the lake waiting for Undine. He and his fellow divers check the footage of the giant catfish he got a while ago. They start packing their things and are ready to go. Meanwhile, Undine is riding a train to meet Kristoff. As soon as she's out from the train, they hug each other. They spend the night together in a hotel. Later on, Undine and Kristoff dive underwater together. He shows Undine the carved name of her under the water, probably his own doing as an effort to be romantic. Kristoff lets go of her hand to properly show her the name until suddenly Undine is nowhere from Kristoff's sight. The catfish appears. Moments later, Kristoff spots a pair of diver flippers floating with a flashlight. He searches for Undine out of panic and finally finds Undine, but she is being dragged by the catfish. Undine's diving equipment is no longer intact to her. The catfish leaves her floating unconscious body in the water. Kristoff immediately retrieves her and performs CPR. Fortunately, Undine is saved by his immediate rescue. They hug and flirt each other's hormones right after, as if nothing even happened. Later on, after spending the weekend together, Undine now readies herself to ride the train as Kristoff escorts her to the station. As they both wait for the train, Kristoff gives something to Undine before her train can depart. He gives her a figurine of a diver that is from the aquarium that broke when they first met. Undine goes back to being an historian and cherishes the figurine to the point that she always has it beside her. Unfortunately, it breaks as she accidentally hits it with her hand as she wakes up. Her colleague requests her to have the forum, and so she practices for the forum as she tries to fix the broken figurine. Undine receives a call from Kristoff. He visits her in her unit. They spend the night together and talk about the figurine diver that's now broken. They both enjoy the night, kissing, and even having wine spilled. The next day comes, Kristoff will be at work in time for Undine's forum, so he asks her to let him hear her forum talk, as he will not be present for her forum. Undine allows his request and starts her practice talk for the forum. Kristoff listens to her talk with full attention. They go outside the veranda to make the forum performance realistic by asking the audience to participate in the talk. The scene shows how utterly in love the two are with each other. The next day, they walk to the train station as Kristoff is set to go back to his work. While they bid each other goodbye, they tongue massage some more. They then both go back to their work. Later on, before Undang can get inside the establishment she's working at, she finds John waiting for her. John admits that he's truly having an affair with someone else. He shows his regret. 
He tells her that he's willing to make up for his mistakes, but Undine heads to the forum venue. As she's about to start the forum, she looks from the window view and finds John waiting for her in the same spot where she left him from the very beginning. Undine brushes it off and continues with the forum talk. As soon as she's done with her forum talk, just like from before, she goes straight outside to meet John. They head to the same cafe from the first scene, when Undine suspected John of cheating on her. They sit, but the waiter tells them that Undine cannot order anything from the cafe, as she's banned there because of the incident she and Kristoff made from before. Undine does not move and just listens to John talk. John tells her that he will wait for her to finish and tells her that they will drive to the hotel Undine has always wanted him to bring her to. Undine does not say anything and simply walks out. Undine views John from the window once again, seemingly not successful in completely moving on from her ex. Undine catches him leaving their spot. This implies that John will no longer wait for her, as he probably has already accepted that their relationship is completely over now. Back in her dorm, Undine happily listens to music. Kristoff calls her, asking her if she is waiting for someone in particular at the cafe. He wants her to admit if she has ever loved someone before him, or at least aside from him. Undine denies the truth, and he claims that she is lying. Kristoff is sure Undine is lying, making him so upset that he hangs up the phone, never answering her call again. Over the night, Undine tries to call him, but ends up getting directed to voicemail. There, she chooses to admit that everything Kristoff suspects about her waiting for someone in the cafe is true. She admits lying and explains everything to him that he's the one she loves now. The next morning, Undine wakes up and decides to go to Kristoff personally as he is still not responding to her. She gets off the train and heads straight to the lake where she sees a commotion. She calls for Kristoff, but his colleague tells her that Kristoff is currently in the hospital because of an accident. She desperately asks for the hospital where Kristoff is and rushes to head there. Inside the hospital room, she finds a girl colleague of Kristoff. Undine sees Kristoff with tubes intact to him, still unconscious. The girl colleague tells Undine that Kristoff went 12 minutes without air, so the doctor says he's already brain dead. Undine finds it hard to believe, as they were just talking last night. Tears pool in Undine's eyes. She asks if there was anything Kristoff mentioned before the accident. Undine claims Kristoff called her last night, which makes the girl colleague mad and says that the two of them couldn't possibly have talked last night. Since Kristoff began his dive yesterday afternoon, they pulled him out and he was declared brain dead at the hospital by 3.40 p.m. This implies that it's impossible for the Undine and Kristoff to talk last night, as he's already declared brain dead around the time he called her through the phone. The girl Kali walks out, as she is pissed off with Undine's claim. On the other hand, Undine cannot process the truth that her conversation with Kristoff didn't happen, when she clearly knew she talked to him. The aquarium inside Kristoff's hospital room suddenly breaks, as though it's linked with Undine. She weeps as she caresses and kisses the unconscious Kristoff. After that, Undine leaves the hospital and rides the train back home. As the night comes, she continues walking alone until she reaches a big house. She opens the gate of the house and enters in. Undine hears talking from a distance. She sees a girl in her swimsuit through the glass walls. She proceeds to walk forward until she reaches the back of the house where the pool is. There, Undine finds John with another woman. The woman tells John to leave the pool, as his parents will come home soon, but he doesn't listen, so the woman just leaves, leaving John and Undine there. Undine silently submerges herself into the pool. She kills John by drowning him. After that, she just leaves the pool, as if she just didn't commit a crime. This scene gives off the feeling of Undine's frustration. She probably feels guilty over the tragedy that was struck upon Kristoff, as she couldn't move on with John after all this time that they've been together. This implies that Undine is feeling punished for not being able to love Kristoff fully and leave John completely. Dawn comes, and Undine heads to the lake, submerging underwater. She seems ready to be taken by the water. At that exact moment when Undine surrenders herself and gets swallowed by the water, Kristoff wakes up from his hospital bed as he shouts for Undine's name. He searches for Undine after being discharged, still with his cast to walk. Kristoff goes to her old place, but someone else seems to already own the unit. He trespasses and forces himself inside to check if Undine is truly not there. There he sees a stain on the wall that he proudly claims is red wine because he's the one who did that from the night they drank wine together. Kristoff goes to the museum where Undine used to work as a historian. He suddenly remembers the last time he and Undine were together. He walks outside and goes to the outdoor cafe where they first met. There he finds Undine's colleague at one of the tables and he tries his luck by trying to ask her colleague. But her colleague also doesn't know where to find her, saying that they have not even seen her for months already. 
with no clues to find Undine's whereabouts. He just goes back to the cafe where they first met and looks for the aquarium that broke that day. Two years pass by. The girl colleague of Kristoff is waving at Kristoff, who is busy working. Later on, the girl is now kissing him. It turns out, they are now a new couple. While they are being intimate as they talk about work, they bring up another colleague of theirs that's offering them an underwater job opportunity. Kristoff is willing to risk it again, as the accident already happened a long time ago. It also reveals that the girl is already 16 weeks pregnant, with Kristoff as the father. As Kristoff is diving again, a human hand appears to hold his hand as he works. That hand turns out to be Undine's hand. Undine seems to be an underwater nymph now after killing her former lover. After holding his hands, she immediately leaves and swims away from him. Kristoff goes out of the water and up to the deck. He denies what he just saw and proceeds to get back to land. Kristoff's girl tells him she got scared for his life as he took a while to get back. Kristoff's behavior turns odd. He checks the screen, where he can watch the recorded footage and replay it. It shows that there's no undamed being captured. Later that night, as Kristoff and his new girl are sleeping, Kristoff goes outside to the lake silently. He desperately searches for Undine, shouting in the water. His new girl runs after him and shouts for his name, trying to stop Kristoff. But Kristoff doesn't listen. Instead, he goes into the water, and there he meets Undine. They hold each other's hand. Kristoff seems to be letting himself get swallowed by the water, together with Undine. The other girl then weeps for her Kristoff, but he goes back to her. The film ends with Kristoff returning back to his new lover, with the statue diver that Undine and Kristoff's love was once shared with. Kristoff makes his decision to live and move on with his new lover. While Undine will probably forever love Kristoff in her new form as an underwater nymph that loves more than a human. And that ends the film based on a myth, a tragic figure called Undine. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.